should start with some ohms. Yeah, that would be nice. That would be nice. Let's do that. So we're going to start with three ohms. And um, so just get comfortable. And just close your eyes. And just take a nice deep breath. And wherever, however you've started your day, or if you're finishing your day, because we're all in different time zones, just see if you can just let go of whatever has happened in the last 10 minutes, the last hour, and just become aware of your breath. Just noticing your inhalation and your exhalation. And then when you're ready, you just take a nice, long, slow inhalation. And then we're just going to sound the mantra Om. Oh. So welcome everybody to our daily practice, Ishtamala. I think I better turn off, turn off my... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is a practice that we do daily. Um, it's the only practice we do. Um, it's got basically, it fits into any time frame. Um, so for people who are busy, 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 <laughs> it gives you um, something that fits into your lifestyle rather than your lifestyle fitting around that. You know, like I said in the class this morning, you don't fit your lifestyle around your brushing of your teeth. You know, so it, it fits into your life, however you wish it to fit into your life. Yeah. Um, how this practice came about was uh, sort of inspirational, I guess, in a way. I was living in a place called Palani with my uh, Siddha family. And um, I just wanted a, a simple practice that works the body and gets you into, gets the, the work done that, that, that the physical exercises are there to do. Um, and slowly, slowly, this, this whole sequence just came about. And, and um, so working the left side of the body and the right side of the body. So the standard postures, the standing postures and seated postures. And the whole idea behind physical yoga is to clear the nadis. The two main nadis being the sun and the moon nadi, the right and left side of the body. <clears throat> And then you, there's this nadi, shushumna nadi, in the center of the spine, which everybody tries to get to, which happen, you, you, you know, when the breathing goes on every odd 90 minutes, the breath equalizes and you go into shushumna automatically, and then it goes left, moon, start, moon uh, nadi, and then sun nadi, and that's every 90 minutes odd. It keeps the flow, called swara, keeps flowing between sun and moon. And so in the, when the moon is up, then you're reflective. When the sun is up, you're more active. And in the middle, you're more contemplative. Yeah. So what you want in yoga is an exercise system that balances the doshas. But there's so many things happening in this body. There's not only the right side and the sun and the moon nadis that are, are affecting the flow of energy in the body, but there's also the doshas. Um, Ayurveda talks about the doshas, and there's also the gunas, sattva rajas tamas. So when your right nostril is breathing, 
you might you know breathe through the right nostril sun moon uh, sun uh, night is activated but there's also maybe the dosha might be um, kapha pitta dosha operating you on you and, and the then there's the guna that's operating on the body with the sattva rajas of tamas uh, and there also is the five elements the grand elements earth water fire and space work <laughs> <laughs> can, I, can I just explain yes. what the gunas are? Because okay. some people don't um, Perfect. know much about those kinds Guna. of things. Guna so line. gunas are the, the qualities in nature, and those are thought of as movement and inertia, and then the balance, the, the sort of purity that emerges. And the image that's often used is like when you look at a tree in winter, that's inert. When you look at um, a tree in spring, it's absolutely alive. And then what is the result of that aliveness is you get a fruit. So sattva is sort of the representation of the purity or the, or the fruit. And then the doshas are the combinations of the elements. So uh, water and earth is what they call kapha dosha and fire and a little bit of water is pitta dosha and then air and space is vata dosha. There you go. <laughs> That's all comes from the sun, moon, plus the earth element, the grand elements, earth, fire, water, air, space, and how the atmosphere that we exist in and that we've been created in affects our existence. So the yogi wants to basically iron that all out and go back to a natural state that we are when we're born you know, and try and maintain that as much as possible. Um, and so you start using the body the limitation of the body so the whole idea in yoga if you if anybody's ever studied tantra the whole pr uh, principle in tantra is use the limitation to free yourself of limitation so it starts by using the body using the body to free ourselves of the limitation of the body so what we all as conscious beings seem to appear to fall through or, or, or fall down through is the consciousness seems to appears to fall through the body um gravity impacting on the body etc so basically yogis decided to use the body to free the free ourselves from the limitation of the body first then comes the breathing exercises that free you of the limitation of the breath and then comes the final uh limitation of course, there are loads of limitations, but the, the <laughs> final limitation in yoga, which is the limitation of the mind to free ourselves of the limitation of the mind, which comes through self-knowledge. So this limitation, they, uh, the, I was said, they, you know, they said to me, ah, oh, you know, we've learned to all the yoga from the animals. And the one animal that we've been watching is the human being animal. And um, if you watch the human body, the body uses whatever it falls on to lift itself up. So you, it uses the limitation to lift it, to free itself of the limitation. That's where the idea came from, of the whole of Tantra and the whole of Ayurveda. Use the disease to cure the disease. Yeah, so using the limitation to free yourself of the limitation, you suddenly realize, ah, oh, I was never limited to begin with. And that's the nature, the human being is never limited. It's, we're only limited how by how we limit ourselves. So starting with the body, what you want, you basically in yoga, you want to get a body that is, is uh, able to be used to, to milk the body of its in yoga called the amrit, the nectar, the juice, the virility, you want to build up your virility and you build up, that's why it works and people enjoy the whole exercise system so much, because it builds up your mm -hmm. immune system, it builds up your strength, your virility, etc. Now, once you've done the, the body exercises, the whole idea is to then be able to use the body as the launch pad for expansion of, expansion of energy, which comes in pranayama, which is what we're doing on Monday. We do the advanced pranayama exercises. And then the whole idea in yoga is to be able to sit in what's called siddhasana. So you, you, the whole practice of, besides purifying the nadis, 
Siddhasana in the Hatha Yoga Pradipika is the, called the accomplished pose. So it's the final pose of yoga because it's the platform from which you can then milk the body, trick the body into releasing its juice, the ojas that forms as a result of being in its natural state and natural diet, coming from having a natural diet, etc., and a moderate lifestyle. So sitting in Siddhasana, you sit on your left heel like that. You put your right heel on top of the left and you bring the left across and you pull that left big toe through the crease in the, between the thumb, I mean, between the calf and the thigh muscle on the right leg. And then it locks it like a pincer. But and don't panic. We're not doing that. We're not doing that now in the sequence <laughs> we're not doing that in the sequence but like so this is the final pose why because it gives you the leverage to be able to work it's like a brick wall for the body to work against in the breathing exercises called pranayama so ishtamala the sequence helps your body to get into this pose as well as doing the job of purifying the nadis and what's great about it is you just put it in your memory, store it here, and you just do the same sequence every day, simplifies the whole yoga thing. The same sequence every day. And what you find is when you're doing Ishtamala, a lot of people who find themselves hooked on Ishtamala, because that's what happens, they find they can go to any yoga class and they're just in there and they're just doing all the yoga, no problem. <laughs> because it works the whole body. Um, and we do this religiously, well, religiously, we just do it every day, <laughs> very religiously. <laughs> okay, but um, so you can, you either doing the seated, we either do the seated postures, which we do every day. Um, and then we've got the standing postures, so which the whole sequence is standing postures, dynamic, and static. So the seated postures, and it can either fit into uh, 20 minutes, it can fit into 10 minutes. It can fit into five. It all determined by how the sequence remains the same, but it determined by how many breaths you take in each posture. And so if you've got a lot of time on a Sunday, say, or something, you can extend the breaths. What we normally do is average out at about four breaths per posture. Some are extended and doubled when you get into holds. But then uh, on the weekend, if you've got time, you can extend that to 32 breaths per posture, which takes the practice up to about an hour and a half. Then you can extend it up to 64 breaths per posture. Why 64 breaths per posture? I was sitting with one of my, with my master actually, and I was talking yoga with a Westerner. And we were talking about how, you know, people don't like holding postures. <laughs> And then we were just discussing how, you know, do you like holding postures? And I said, well, I like holding postures. But the, so we're having this discussion and my teacher piped up and said, but aren't you supposed to hold the pose until you hit Samadhi? If anybody knows what Samadhi is, uh, that's the final kind of point of yoga. And as a Hatha Yogi, that is exactly what it's about. Holding the posture until you hit Samadhi. And what is that? It's just like running. You know, when you jog, you're going to run. And when you start the jog, start running, you know, the mind's coming up. Oh, God, I don't feel like running today. And you run, 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 run. You then eventually you hit that point of capitulation where the mind capitulates. It just goes about doing the job and, and, and then just goes about fixing whatever needs to be fixed in the body. And in the end, you're not, you're just running effortlessly. The same thing happens in yoga. You, you hit the wall when you're holding the yoga posture and then the mind goes about fixing whatever's going on in the body and the breathing slows down, everything starts happening, all the benefits start happening because the blood starts flowing into all the nadis and purifying all the nadis. And so this sequence is about, it's called, you know, in, in yoga, asana is called nadi sodhana, purification of the nadis doing the asanas, the exercises, the stretching and all that is purification of nadis so that you then set the stage for using the uh, breathing 
to expand energy, which uses all the nadis and, and, and uses all the energy, energy in the body. So that's what this sequence is all about. And it's easy because you just memorize it, fit it into whatever time frame you want in your life, and that's it. You, you, you're good to go. Yeah. Right. Okay, we're done. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, are we done? I did, did I do it exactly in 15 minutes? You did. You I've did. got the bus here. All right. So we're going to go through the sequence. Yeah. And then John's going to come back at the end and take us through Yoga Nidra. Perfect. So that'll be um, lovely. All right. See you all. All right. So you don't really need anything other than your mat. And you might, as I, I sent an email to most of you saying you might need some blocks or uh, some props if you're uncomfortable. I'll give as many modifications and variations as I can, but I want you to really look after yourself. Um, if something doesn't feel good, don't do it. Just take a break. You can just watch. And at the end, this is recorded, so I will be able to send you um, a download so that you can download it and have it, and you can just practice it anytime. And maybe you'll like to come again to our next community class, which will be next month. All right, so let's come to the front of our mat. Have your toes touching and your heels slightly apart. We're going to interlace the fingers, inhale, raise the arms up, drop the chin, and we're going to take four breaths here. And you can engage Ujjayi breath, or you could just breathe naturally, whatever's comfortable. You might even want to engage the inner thighs here. And then exhaling, folding forward, coming into Uttanasana. You can soften the knees here and just take four breaths. And then inhale, lengthen the spine. Just taking some breaths here, four breaths. And then we're going to come into a squat. And again, we're going to hold this for four breaths. Now, if it's comfortable for you to drop onto your heels and support yourself here, you can be in this position and just opening the chest, taking four breaths. If that's not comfortable, just come onto the balls of the feet. All right. On our next exhalation, we're going to step back and you can either lower all the way to the floor and rest here for four breaths. Or if you're keen, you might want to just do the chaturanga for four breaths. It's a little bit harder to hold. And then maybe just kneading down on the mat. And then either you can come into baby cobra or all the way into up dog. Four breaths here. Make sure you squeeze the inner thighs and engage your lower abdomen to protect your lower back. And then pressing back into down dog. And we'll take four breaths in down dog. If you're comfortable with Ujjayi, just using Ujjayi, I'm not going to be giving a lot of detailed alignment in this sequence. It's more just following your breaths. On your next exhalation, soften the knees. You can step or jump forward, coming back into that squat position. Again, just looking up, lengthening the front of the body, the lifting the chin, four breaths. And really take those breaths at your own pace. So if I'm a little bit ahead or a little bit behind, don't worry. And then exhale again, folding forward, Uttanasana. You can soften the knees here, four breaths. And then interlacing the fingers, coming all the way up, chin into the chest, taking four breaths. All right, now we're gonna do one breath per movement. So inhalation, interlace the fingers, chin into the chest, raise the arms up. Exhale, folding forwards. Inhale, coming into the squat. Exhale, stepping yourself back and lowering all the way to the floor or chaturanga. You can roll through into up dog or come into baby cobra. Press back into down dog. Four breaths here. Feel free to bend your knees if you have any tension in your hamstrings. You can walk through if you like, you know, straightening one leg and bending the other. Finish that fourth breath, look to the hands, step or jump the feet forward, coming into the squat and exhale, folding forward and inhale, interlacing the fingers, chin into the chest, one breath and exhale, lowering the arms. And we'll do that again. Inhale, coming up, 
Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, coming into the squat. And exhale, step or jump back. Again, you can lower all the way to the floor here and just come into baby cobra, or you can press into up dog and then roll through into down dog. Breathing in down dog, four breaths. You can draw the chin into the chest and just listen, close your eyes and just listen to the sound of the breath, listening to the ujjayi, focusing the mind, looking to the hands, Soften the knees, come again into the squat. Exhale, folding forwards. Inhale, interlacing the fingers, chin into the chest, and release. All right. So when you're doing this sequence on your own, you can do as many rounds as you like of the one breath per movement. But uh, because we have limited time, I'm gonna take you into the next part of the sequence. So we're gonna bend the knees, sitting back as we exhale. Inhale, standing upright, and exhale, folding forward. Always bend the knees if there's tension in your hamstring. Inhale, coming into the squat, and exhale again. Step or jump back, plank position, lowering chaturanga or all the way to the floor. Inhale into up dog. Exhale, down dog. Turn your left heel down. Step your right foot in between your hands. We'll come into Virabhadrasana one with a little bit of a variation. We keep the arms at shoulder height. And we bring the sides of the palms together and we make like a little offering with our hands. So it's a, it's a devotional mudra, mudra of offering. And you can almost feel like you're breathing in through your hands. And then exhale, hands to the floor, stepping back, lowering to the floor or chaturanga, baby cobra or up dog, pressing back into down dog. Turn the right heel down, step the left foot in between the hands. And again, bringing the sides of the fingers together, coming to that beautiful mudra, breath flowing, activating the outer back foot and hands to the floor. And again, we can lower chaturanga, up dog, down dog, and just taking four breaths. You might like to close your eyes and just listen to the sound of your breath, or you might like to keep your eyes open, whatever feels good. All right, on your next exhalation, step or jump forward, coming into the squat, exhale, folding forward, inhale, coming into our chair pose, and then standing upright, exhaling, lowering the arms. We're gonna do one more round of that. So sitting low, inhale, stand up, Exhale, dive forwards. Inhale into the squat. Exhale, lowering to the floor. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Left foot down, right foot in between the hands. Virabhadrasana one. Breathing four breaths here. You know, if it's too much to bend the knee, you can have the leg, the front leg a little bit less of a bend in that front knee. And then hands to the floor, step back, lowering chaturanga, roll through up dog, exhale, down dog, right heel turns down, left foot in between the hands. And again, little fingers come together. And then hands to the floor, stepping back. You can do one more vinyasa or you can just rest in down dog. I think this is about as heavy as it gets, by the way. <laughs> it's actually, um, the sun salutations are just a very small part of the practice and they're just designed to get you nice and limber and warm. And then completing that fourth breath, coming back into the squat, feeling the lower back release. Exhale, fold forward and then bend the knees, sit low, coming into a chair, coming to a low chair if you can. So you can really feel your thighs engaging here. And then inhale, stand up, right? And exhale release the arms. All right. So normally what we do is we take a big step back with the right leg. So I'm going to face you and we're going to come into Trikonasana. So, oh, I forgot Utkatasana. Whoops. <laughs> so bring your hands to your hips <laughs> and open your chest. And exhale, folding forward. So feet are inner hip width distance apart. We're gonna take the first two fingers and hook them around the big toe and just lengthen the spine. Bend your knees if there's any tension in your hamstrings and let's 
just let your head hang and just take four breaths here. And then wrapping the hands behind, holding on to the opposite forearm. You can slide the hands down. You can have the knees bent. And again, four breaths. And then slowly release the arms and just gently rolling up through the spine. And then taking a step back so that you've got, you have your right foot, whoops, your right foot out and your left foot slightly in. You're gonna take the arms out to the side, deep in through the hip crease, bring the hand to the ankle, coming into Trikonasana. Just looking straight ahead, just breathing here. Four breaths. So we're focusing on the breath rather than perfect alignment. So you might be here, you might have your hand on your hip. You might be all the way down on the floor. It really doesn't matter. All right, and then inhale coming up. And exhale, we're gonna go arms out to the side, all the way to the other side, lengthening through the spine. Four breaths if you want, and you're, there's no strain in your neck, you can tuck your chin into your chest and look up to your hand. All right, and then inhale coming up and then swing the feet around and take that left arm, that left hand to the outside of the right foot or left hand onto the right ankle. You can bring your other hand to your lower back. We're coming into a revolved triangle. You might wanna bend that front knee if there's any tension. And then as you lengthen, raise your arm into the air and just breathe, four breaths. And then slowly coming up, right? And then just shift to the other side, bring your hand to your ankle, other hand to your lower back. You can raise the arm. And then slowly coming all the way upright. All right, and then I'm gonna take the feet a little bit wider apart having the right heel in line with the left heel and bend the right knee. And we're going to skip Virabhadrasana two and go straight into right angle. So arms out to the side, lengthen the torso over the front thigh, bring the hand to the little toe side of the foot and bring the other arm up. Right hip draws back, left hip rolls down. And just breathing here, lengthening through the fingers. If that's not comfortable, rest your forearm on your thigh and then reach your arm up over your head. So you're feeling this extension from your middle finger all the way to the outer heel, holding for four breaths, must be four breaths by now. And then just gently coming up, changing sides, bending that front knee, hand to the little toe side of the foot, let the top hip drop, just takes a little pressure off the lower back and then raise the arm the other way. You can look down, you can look straight ahead, you can look up to your hand. Just make sure there's no strain in your neck. And if it's too strong, forearm to the thigh. So when I say too strong, it's uncomfortable to have your hand on the floor. So we wanna be as comfortable as we can and not straining or forcing. All right, inhale coming up. And now we're gonna bring our palms to touch and turn all the way around and bend the front knee. We're gonna come into revolved right angle. So you're gonna hook your upper left arm against your outer right thigh. If it's not comfortable to have your foot flat, come onto the ball of your back foot and then just turn the torso and breathe. Inhalation, exhalation. And then making your way back upright, hands in the center of the chest, turning yourself the other way. You can have that foot flat or be on the ball of the foot and hook the other arm behind and breathe. All right, and then inhale, coming back to center. So coming into Padottanasana, fan pose, hands on the hips, lift your chest slightly, fold forward at the hip crease. And you can either bring your fingertips to the floor, or if it's comfortable for you to have your fingertips in line with your toes, go ahead and do that. Or maybe you just wanna have your hands on your hips. 
And then we're going to interlace the fingers at the small of the back and reach the arms up over the head. Creating space behind the shoulder blades. See if you can keep your palms together. But if you can't, that's okay too. And then lastly, we're going to release the first two fingers and hook them around the big toes and just lengthen and draw ourselves deeper in. If you need to bend your knees with tight hamstrings here, go ahead. You know, always keep modifying according to your flexibility and ability. All right, and then hands to the hips, bring yourself back upright and come and stand at the front of the mat. And just take a moment here to gaze at a point in front. Just relax. All right, so we're gonna step our right leg behind us and turn all the way to face the back of the mat. And then we're gonna take our arms behind us and either bring our hands into that prayer position or we're going to fold the arms and hold on to the opposite forearm or we're gonna interlace the fingers and open through the chest and fold forward at the hip crease. And then you can soften your knee as you lengthen forward. If it's too hard to balance here, just put your hands on the floor. If you've got blocks, you can put your hands on blocks. So whatever works for you. Breathe, four breaths. And then slowly coming upright, turning yourself around. Again, opening the chest, folding forwards, and parsvottanasana, triangle forward bend making any adjustment you need to, to be able to hold the pose without forcing or straining. And then slowly coming all the way upright, standing at the front of the mat. All right, and then we finish the standing pose series with Vrikshasana, a few arm variations. So you can either rest the ball of the foot on the floor with the heel slightly above the ankle. You can have the foot on the inside of the shin, or you might want to bring that foot all the way upright. You might want to hold on to something if you have any balance issues. The idea is just to be able to have those hips level, squared forward. And we're going to start by bringing the palms to touch here. And then we're going to lift the hands to the top of the head. And then the last stage is to cross at the wrists and lengthen the fingers towards the ceiling. And then slowly bring the thumb and index finger together with the hands open. And then release that foot. And then changing sides. So coming up, either resting here, inside of the shin, or all the way up to where the top of the thigh and the groin meet, bringing the palms to touch. Having the hands on the top of the head. Seeing if you can remember which way you cross the wrist and crossing the other way. It's always a bit of a challenge. Keep breathing. We're doing four breaths here and then bringing fingers, thumb and index finger together. And then releasing, toes touching, heels slightly apart. And then we're gonna head back, if you're not already at the front of your mat, to the front of the mat. And we're gonna work our way down to the seated poses. So interlacing the fingers, raising the arms up, and then exhale, folding forwards, softening the knees, letting the head release rising or coming into the squat and then taking yourself back into plank position, lowering the knees, bending the elbows, coming all the way to the floor. All right, so we're gonna come up into uh, <laughs> Bhujangasana, Cobra pose. For some of us, this is too strong on the lower back. So I'm just gonna give you the alternative. So Sphinx pose. You can hold Sphinx Pose the entire time. If you want to try Bhujangasana, make sure the thumbs are moving back towards the breast line. 
elbows close in, buttocks soft, and just slowly start to lift up. So you can straighten the arms. The pubic bone might come slightly off, so you might need to bend the elbows. And you don't want to feel any pressure at all in your lower back. So back of the neck long, breath flowing. You'll feel the stretch through the whole front of the body and we take eight breaths here. And then slowly lowering down. And then we're going to come into child's pose. So coming up onto the hands and knees, bringing the knees together and arms alongside the body and just let the head release. All right, and then coming up, we're gonna take the knees mat width apart and we're gonna come into 12 point posture. Or some of us call it forward virasana. So we're just going to walk the hands out in front and lengthening forward. Now it might be more comfortable for you to rest on your forearms here or have one fist on top of the other. If it's comfortable to reach the arms all the way forwards, maybe you wanna turn your head to the side or rest your chin or rest your forehead. And we're gonna hold this for eight breaths. All right, and then slowly coming up and bringing your knees together. And we're going to roll over the toes. If that's not comfortable for you, you can always just sit to one side and swing your legs around in front. But for those who wanna give it a go, we're going to lift up and roll over the toes and then come and sit with the legs out in front. All right, so that is the end of the standing sequence cycle. And as John was saying, often we split it up. So we might, something that I do sometimes is I do the standing cycle in the morning and the seated cycle in the afternoon, or we just do the seated cycle um, because it doesn't take very long and it still does all that work of clearing the energy lines, the nadis in the body and preparing us for our morning pranayama practice. So we're gonna bend the right leg and step the right foot over the left. Um, so we actually twist on the left side first, which is kind of counterintuitive to what most people teach. And the reason being that we, well, we like to start with the moon nadi. So we're starting with the moon energy, that feminine energy and balancing that first. So turning your torso to the left and just taking the upper arm to the, out, to the inside of the shin and just taking four breaths here. And then turning yourself around the other way, you can reach that arm up and hook it behind the outer thigh and just breathe. Four breaths, really try and sit on the center of your sitting bones. You might need to prop yourself if it's not comfortable to sit flat. You really don't wanna be sitting on the back of your sitting bone because that's gonna uh, cause you to round. So having a little bit of a prop will help. All right, and then coming back to center. So now we're gonna place our right foot right in line with the sitting bone, yeah? And then we're gonna take a big inhalation and raise the arms up. And then we're gonna reach the hands towards the foot. Now, obviously, if this is challenging for you, just bend the knee a little bit so that you can still reach your foot and have your belly relaxed on your thigh. I'm just gonna turn this way again. So we're either lengthening here, we might be all the way down, or we might be with the knee bent and just holding the foot. Again, we take four breaths. 
And then you take your hands behind you. You're going to lift your pelvis up towards the ceiling and come onto the ball of your right foot. Like that. And take your head back. Hold your breath here. And then coming back down. So what we're doing when we go back like that is it's like we're opening everything up. We're stretching everything, all the front of the body and releasing all the energy from the fold. So it's like we compress and then we release. And we're going to do that in every single seated pose. So our next posture is half lotus. Obviously not everyone can do this. So if it's not comfortable for you to sit with your um, foot right up to the inside of your thigh, there's a couple of options. One is you can place your foot just above your knee and you're making like a right angle here. And then you can reach towards your foot. It's kind of an, a strong outer hip stretch. If that's too strong, just come into Janu Shishasana and hold Janu Shishasana. Okay, so we'll just come into whatever variation works for us. We're gonna interlace the fingers, raise the arms up, big breath, and then exhale, folding forwards. Again, you might need to bend your knee here. Not if you're in the lotus, definitely not. Don't bend your knee because it's too strong on the other knee. But if you're in another variation, you might wanna bend your knee as well. And then just four breaths here. And then going with the hands behind you. And we're going to lift the pelvis up into the air, holding the breath at the top. So inhaling and exhaling, coming down. And then bringing the sole of the foot to the inside seam of the leg, coming into our Janu Shirshasana position. Inhale, raising the arms up, big breath and exhale coming forward. Again, choosing your variation. So if you've already done Janu Shishasana, you're gonna do it again. <laughs> and then just breathing four breaths here. And then hands behind. Now this time we're gonna rise up so that we're balanced on the front of the shin here. Hands behind, holding the breath. And coming back. Now we're gonna come into a hurdle stretch now, right? So. Um, what is this? Triang Mukha Ekapada Pashi Motanasana. Oh my God, what a mouthful. So you've got your heel beside your buttocks, your inner thighs are connected. You might find that you tend to lean on one side. So you can have your fingertips here to help you balance. It might be uncomfortable on your knee, then take the leg wide with the heel behind you. So always an option, a variation for you in the practice. Then we're gonna inhale, raise the arms up. And I'm going to put my hand here and then lengthen forwards. Again, you just go maybe with the knee bent, whatever your ability is. Four breaths. And then bringing the hand behind you. Now we're going to go up again. And now when we go up and go back, when we sit back down, you're actually going to sit on your heel. So if that's not comfortable, if this isn't comfortable, you can sit again in Janu Shishasana and repeat that. Otherwise, we're going to inhale and go back, hold the breath, and then slide the heel underneath you and sit on your heel. So your heel is literally in your anus. <laughs> and then you try and find your balance here. So this isn't going to work for everybody. So definitely come back into the other position if that's more comfortable and then once you're here we're going to inhale raise the arms up and exhale you'll notice that as you come forward the heel moves from the anus to the perineum and that's really we're closing that energy off and pushing all the prana into the body so holding the breath here uh, sorry breathing here four breaths So sometimes what John and I do is we actually uh, hold this for 16 breaths or 32 breaths. And then bringing the hand back and lifting the pelvis, holding the breath, and then bringing that foot in front and sitting back down. All right. Then we're going to bend the left leg and scoop the hands underneath the foot and you just lift the leg. You can straighten the leg here. You can have the knee bent. Again, you work to what's comfortable for you. If you've got the leg straight and you're super flexible here, 
You might even want to, you know, draw it closer. I'm not going to do that. And again, we take four breaths. And then releasing, bringing the hands back, lifting up, and then bring the feet together and sitting into Dandasana for a moment. And now we're going to come into boat pose. So just shift your weight slightly behind your sitting bones and lift your feet. And then you can raise your arms. If it's comfortable to balance here with straight legs, go ahead and do that. Otherwise, keep your knees bent. Sometimes I like to even cross my ankles because I get quite tight in the uh, hip flexors. So you can do that as well. It's not easy to balance here. Just have your hands on the floor and maybe just lift one leg at a time. Again, lots of options here. And then release, and we're gonna finish with, on this side with Paschimottanasana, full forward fold. So take a big inhalation and soften the knees, holding on to the outsides of the feet and let your head release. If you're very open and flexible, by all means, have your legs straight and fold forward. And I like to bend my knees here and just hold the feet. And again, usually we hold this for eight counts. All right, and then coming up, bringing the hands behind you, we're gonna lift the pelvis into Purvottanasana. So hands come back. We're gonna lift the pelvis and hold the breath. So you take an inhalation and then hold the breath. And then coming down, and we're gonna do all that on the other side. So you're gonna cross your left leg over your right leg. Now we're gonna go into that sun nadi the energetic side, the right side. So we've stimulated the moon. Now we're going to excite the sun and turn the torso to the right. So it's a nice open twist, four breaths. And then coming around to the other side, you can hook the upper arm against the outer thigh. I'm going to wrap my forearm around the shin, flexing the opposite foot, four breaths. All right, and coming back to center, you're gonna line your heel up with your sitting bone. Inhale, raise the arms up, chin into the chest and exhale, lengthening forwards. So depending on you, know, you and your own practice, you might like to bind here. You might like to bend your knee. Your knee might come right out. Don't worry, whatever happens is what happens. And in, it's in the repetition, you know, doing it every day, every day. It's amazing how much you open up. So inhale, hands behind you and lift the pelvis, come onto the ball of the foot and exhale, lowering down. And then we're going to come into that half lotus position or a uh, what we call a brahmasana position. So ankle to knee, or you might even just be in Janu Shirshasana. So from here, you would only really do this half lotus if there's no pressure in your knee and that has a lot to do with hip rotation. So, you know, that comes through doing the practice. And then so eventually you can get into half lotus, but you have to start somewhere. So inhaling, raising the arms up and exhale, coming forwards, taking your four breaths here. And then coming back, we're gonna lift the pelvis, holding the breath. And then we'll come into that seated ankle to knee, uh, Janu Shashasana, seated head of knee pose, head to knee pose. Inhale, raising the arms up. And exhale, lengthening forwards. Four breaths here. Again, you can take a nice, easy variation. Bringing the hands behind you and lifting up and lowering down and then turning that leg around into the half virasana. 
having the fingertip beside you. Again, if it's not comfortable, come back to Janu Shasana. So, you know, each side is different as well. Or you might even want to take the knee wide like this and lengthen forward. Sometimes I do that if I've got some extra pressure going on in some part of my body. And you can always do this seated up on a cushion, a block, a blanket. And that also helps you balance. So inhale, raise the arms up and exhale coming forward. All right, and then slowly coming back. As you lift up, you scoot your heel underneath you and you sit on your heel. Inhale, raising the arms up, big breath. Exhale, taking yourself forwards. Feeling that shift of the heel from into, you know, really engaging that pelvic floor. Having that sense that you're containing your energy. And we're doing eight breaths here. All right, and then slowly coming up and again, going back, holding the breath and then shifting that heel in front, bending the knee, taking hold of the sole of the foot. You might have the knee bent here. You might have it straight. And we're going to hold for four breaths. And then lowering the leg, taking the hands behind you, lifting up. And then extending both legs out in front. And we'll come into boat pose. Arms out. Balancing here. You can straighten the legs. I often notice like one side sort of like a warm up. And then when I get to the second side, I feel stronger and more open and more flexible and quieter in my mind. All right. And then slowly release. We'll do our Paschimottanasana again. So raising the arms up, big breath. And exhale, folding forwards. And then releasing. Now this time when we go back, we're going to breathe. So we're not going to just take one breath and hold. We're actually going to go back and just take normal breaths. If it's not comfortable to do the full core Bhattanasana, you can actually have the knees bent and lift up like so in table pose. So you just choose what feels comfortable for you. So we're going to inhale and then just breathe. All right, and then releasing. And so our last posture is Sarvangasana, shoulder stand. If you are not comfortable with shoulder stand, you don't do it very much, you can go into Viparita Karani. I'm going to demonstrate the most easiest variation. So that's just to lie on your back and take your legs up. You could even take your legs up the wall. For those people who want to do Viparita Karani, just hold in here. You want to make sure to lift the chin. And just hold, just breathing naturally here. Maybe you want to hold for 10 or 15 breaths. We're not going to hold it that long for our practice today. So whatever position you're in, just holding it that little bit longer. And then slowly, if you're in shoulder stand, you might want to go through halasana. And then if you're not in shoulder stand, just slowly coming down. And getting comfortable for your shavasana. 
and I stay here. So getting comfortable, just um, let the arms uh, lie alongside the body, a little bit away from the body. Feet slightly apart and just relax completely. If you like, just roll the head from side to side. Get a balanced position for the head on the floor and feel how the breath just comes effortlessly. Body gets supported totally by the earth underneath the body unconditionally. Feel your body completely letting go to the gravity of the earth as the earth's gravity embraces you like a mother embracing a child drawing you in with gravity feel how the whole relationship with the earth is absolutely effortless and conflict free unconditional. Let your breath come and go effortlessly. Heart beats effortless. I want you to just bring your awareness to where your heels touch the floor. Feel those two points. And feel those two points relaxing completely. Then moving into the calf muscles, feel the two points of the calf muscles touch the floor. Feel those two points relaxing completely. Then moving into the thighs, where the thighs touch the floor, feel those points relaxing, letting go. Feel where the buttocks touches the floor, feel those two points relaxing. Now moving into the lower back. Feel the whole spine relaxing. Feel the point where the lower back touches the floor. Feel those two points relaxing completely. Where the upper back touches the floor. Feel that point or those points relaxing completely. Feel each muscle supporting the spine in the back, relaxing. Each vertebra relaxes. Feel the chest muscles, letting go any tension in the chest and stomach muscles. Feel any tension in the stomach draining into the earth. As you let it go, it lets you go. Feel the arms, biceps, relaxing. The elbows relax. Forearms, relax. Feel the wrists relaxing. The fingers, palms of the hands, 
stands relaxed. Now moving into the neck, feel the neck muscles, letting get any tension in the neck go. The neck muscles relax completely. There's not a hint of tension left in the body. Each muscle each joint completely relaxed. Now I want you to just bring your awareness to the point where the back of the head meets the ground, meets the floor. Feel at that point, there's like a gold, I mean a blue, sky-colored light. From the point at the base of the skull, where the spine meets the base of the skull, where the floor meets the head, feel this blue electric sky-colored light emerging from that point, washing through the whole brain, whole top of the head fills with this blue sky-colored electric light. Now in the very center of the head, in the middle of the brain, feel like a golden egg resting there. Feel like this gold light emerges through the top of the head, washing forward towards the forehead. This golden liquid light emerges from this egg shape in the middle of the head through the fontanelle at the top of the head moving forward towards the forehead. It cascades down the forehead, drowning the eyes in gold, liquid, colored light. Suffusing the cheeks, the nose, jawbone, lips, with gold light. Your ears hang like golden flowers from your head. Lips part slightly as your jaw relaxes and the tongue lulls into the back of your throat. Just feeling the breath move through the nostrils, body, lungs. Feel how effortless it is. Breathing is effortless. Existence is effortless. Being is effortless. The heart is beating effortlessly. The whole creation is 
going on without any effort. Now, if you'd like now just to take your arms above your head and then just take a big breath, huge breath in and just stretch the right side, right arm and right leg, deep stretch into the right side of the body and exhale, relax. Now take a giant breath and stretch the left side of the body, left arm, left leg, stretching deep into the left side of the body and relax. Now take a massive breath and stretch deep into both sides of the body now stretching deep into the spine deep into the legs clenching the toes and calf muscles thigh muscles and exhale relax gently drawing the knees into the chest roll over onto the right side of your body And when you're ready, slowly opening the eyes, bring your awareness back to the room. And come sitting upright. So thank you everyone for joining us. As I said, this is our community class for our Sundaram online ashram. I'm going to, uh, I've got everybody on a list, so I'm going to send everybody this practice um, with some other information about how you might like to join us in other ways. And uh, we'll be running this class again in April, and uh, you can find those details on our website.